Peace. Peace. Thanks. I uh, appreciate y'all listening in and looking in now. Um, we're going to go over some things about tithing today. All right. So uh, a lot of a lot of misconceptions about tithing, a lot of on both sides of the spectrum, really. So hopefully we can go in and just like the word is meant to do, we can divide everything right and um, get it all together. God willing. OK. All right. So first, we're going to start off with Malachi chapter three. While well, my brother here is getting it. Let's talk about it. All right. Sometimes you go to church hear the word um, or what they say is the word depending on what church you go to and what they'll do is um, in some churches they'll have they'll pass around the offering plate um, but in other churches they'll say tithes and offering right so we're going to take a close look at these these ideas um, you may have even been to a church where you heard this Mal uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 will a man rob God yet ye have robbed me but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. All right, so he says, wherein have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings, right? So this is the Most High God speaking. Um, this is before Jesus came, right? He's speaking to the Israelites. And he says, they're, they're commanded to give tithes, right? And offerings. And he says, we've been robbing them, right? Our people was robbing them, he says. So he says, where, where, well, we asked, where, where have we robbed you at? And he says, in tithes and offerings. Let's keep going. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you, open you the windows of heaven, and pour your and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. All right. So he says, just test me. He said, prove me, but that just means test me, right? Test me in this. If you do it, I guarantee. I'll make sure that it's well worth it for you, all right? So we've heard, this, or a lot of people have heard this, right? You you put in a position in church, they say, hey, if you don't got give God tithes, you're robbing them, right? There's a huge problem with that, right? Because those some of those same Christians, right, those same preachers would tell you that the law is done away with or we're, we're not bound by the law, we're not under the law. And guess where tithes is from? The law, all right? So it's kind of a double standard, kind of hypocritical, for on one end, they say, hey, I worship uh, God on Sunday. I don't keep the Sabbath because the law, the law is done away with. But when it comes to money, I'm still going to collect that money to tithe. And if you don't give it, you're robbing God. All right. So it's, you're trying to play both sides of the stick here. So we're going to try to go around and try to make sure that we can protect ourselves. Again, these videos that we do is not to condemn anybody, but rather to make sure that we can examine ourselves and know that we're in the truth, right? Know that we attend a church that's in the truth. And if we don't, then will know that we have the information to go to the pastor and maybe give him a little correction and hopefully he'll heed to it. All right. Let's go ahead and go to Hebrews chapter seven, verse five. We're going to learn a little bit about who the tithes were meant for and how it was supposed to go. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 5. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the peoples according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. All right? So he said that the Levites, who have the priesthood, which would be the sons of Aaron and the Levites, right? They are able to get the tithes, as commanded in the law. Right. So we know the law. We're not bound by the law. Right. Only by what Jesus Christ commanded us to do. Right. Yahushua, the Messiah. He didn't command us for any ties or anything like that. Um, he did command us to give, however. But just so we understand more about ties, let's let's take a look at it. Right. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 28. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are mainly with our, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat, and be satisfied. Alright, so you have the Levites, you have the fatherless, you have the widows, and the strangers. That's who the tithes were for, right? It was for the poor people, right? It was for to help out the people who didn't have help, right? It was for the Levites who didn't have inheritance in the land, right? The Levites were designated to spread out within the land when the Most High God gave us Israel. 
he he spread it out. We spread it out. The Levites spread it out, and they were able to get and collect from us, right? And we had shared that with them. So let's go to First Corinthians chapter nine, verse thirteen. Right now, what we want to see is what happens in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. What happens under Jesus if a person doesn't give their tithes? Do ye know? Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Talking about the Levites, right? The Levites minister at the temple. They get the things of the temple. The ones that work at the altar, the sacrifices is what he's talking about. They get to eat those sacrifices, right? They, they burn the sacrifice and they get to eat a part of it. They a part of it was kept back according to the law in order to feed the people who work for God, right? Let's keep going. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Right? That's what Jesus said. Jesus said in Luke, he said, now you take, uh, he said, take nothing with you. Go out and preach the word to these people and you are worthy of your wages, right? So whatever they give you, that's what you're worthy of. So he said we should live off of the gospel. That's what Paul is trying to explain to us. All right, let's keep going. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. All right, so Paul said even though these things would be right for me to collect money from you. He didn't mention tithes at all. He said for me it would, it would be right for me to collect money for you. I didn't use it, right? I didn't ask you. That way nobody can take away my boats. Nobody can say, oh, that's just, that pastor just wants some money, right? He said, I didn't ask you for anything. Let's keep going. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for, nece for necessity is laid up for me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Without charge, right? He says, I'm going to preach to you, and when I preach to you, I do it without charge. Why did we go over this? If he did it without charge, that means those people weren't giving tithes or offerings. He never told them that they were robbing God, right? He never, we don't have that. He just said, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this to make sure that you get the word. That's the most important thing, right? That is, is, is important for us to see that because if we do it and if we use the word for the wrong reasons, basically we're acting like we're coming in God's name, but we're not. All right? We have to speak the word as God gave it. Right? That's why it's important for us to properly divide the word. I want you uh, all to jump to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So we are just in 1 Corinthians 9. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians 9. And let's see what Paul says to him the second time around. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall, all, shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth the cheerful giver. All right? So nothing should be put on you, no guilt or anything like that, just like Paul was trying to do. He says, I'm telling you these things. I deserve it, right? I deserve it. Anybody who preached the word, they deserve it. He tells us before, we didn't read it, but he tells us before in 1 Corinthians 9 that um, the ox is not, don't muzzle the ox while it's treading the grain, right? In other words, saying that you have to feed the worker. Whoever's doing the work, you have to feed them. You have to look out for them. You have to pay for them, right? So he's saying this is how it should be done. But even still, I'm not going to put nothing on you to make it of necessity, right? Because that would go against the word. God likes a cheerful gear. So if we're looking at people and we're putting necessity on them to give, that means they're not giving it cheerfully. That means we're taking away from what God likes. All right. So it's important for us to look at it. Whatever we get, that's our wages, and that's what we're worthy of. Right? Don't let anybody, especially not these, the, the, any church that tells you or any pastor that tells you that the law is done away with, or if they say something like, if you keep one part of the law, you're in debt to keep all of it. Right? That's in the Bible. They're taking it out of context. But if they're saying if you do the law, if you do any part of the law, if you keep the Sabbath or the feast days, and that means you're in debt to keep the whole law, you've fallen from grace. Well, you just tell them, well, if you collect tithes, you've done the same thing. All right? Well, peace. And I hope you guys endure it to the end. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you guys uh, go ahead and click the links or the emails to make sure you guys reach out to us. We can help you out if we can, or maybe even we can be corrected. All right? 
Bless you.